Passwords are everywhere on the web. Every account someone makes requires a password, which means that the average user has to remember hundreds of different passwords or use the same one consistently. If users choose to use the same password, the user becomes very vulnerable. If one site is compromised, then every site the user uses that password on becomes compromised as well. So the point of this video is to talk about how this can be resolved. So here's how the password manager helps. The password manager removes the burden of remembering passwords from the user. They only need to remember their master password and the password manager will take care of the rest. The password manager can generate long, truly random strings that make the most common password attacks infeasible, thus greatly improving the security and password strengths of the average user. This video will be looking at two password managers in particular, LastPass and OnePassword. These two services are the most popular and well-known password managers right now. So the main difference between these two password managers is that one password gives the user the option of storing their vault offline, though they also have an online service, whereas LastPass requires that your vault be hosted on their servers. For convenience, most users store their vaults on the password manager servers to get the benefit of vault syncing between devices, allowing the user to access his or her password on any device. This understandably causes some concern because that service now has all of the user's passwords. The purpose of this video is to show that the benefits of using a password manager far outweighs the risks since these services have many safeguards in place to secure your privacy. So here's how LastPass works. There's no sensitive account information that's transported over through the LastPass servers. The LastPass application takes the user's username and master password and puts them through a one-way hashing function to generate a salted hash. So a hash is a one-way function that is easy to compute for any given input, but very, very difficult to reverse given the output of some random input. A salt is an addition to that one-way input within a hash, which makes reversing the function even more difficult because now there are multiple things that could have given that same output. This salted hash goes through, by default, 10,000 different iterations of a key stretching algorithm to generate another hash, which is then sent to the LastPass service in order to authenticate the user. After the user is successfully authenticated, LastPass sends back the user's encrypted vault. After this, the AES-256, which is the current gold standard of encryption, is generated. This process is done by using a key stretching algorithm on another selected hash, which is generated from the username and master password, and this in turn is used to decrypt the vault. This encryption key never actually leaves the user's computer, so the last pass can never decrypt the user's vault. If their user changes anything in their vault, the client-side application encrypts the vault using the encryption key previously generated and sends it to the servers. 1Password, on the other hand, works similar to LastPass, however, it gives the user the choice of where they want to store their vault. The user can choose to store it on their local machine, on a cloud service, or on 1Password server. Wherever the user decides to store their vault, the user needs the same three things to access the password stored in their vault. They need their master password, an account key, and the encrypted vault. The account key is a randomly generated string that is created from a combination of a non-secret version setting, the user's non-secret account ID, and a sequence of 26 characters randomly chosen from a set of 36 characters. After creation, the account key is only stored locally on the user's device by the application and is never transmitted back to 1Password. The account key, in combination with your master password, is then used to generate the key encryption key. The key encryption key is then used to decrypt the user's private key. Once the user has their private key, they can decrypt their vault key, which was encrypted with their public key. After obtaining the vault key, the user can finally decrypt their vault and gain access to the passwords. Note that the process for obtaining the necessary tools to access and unlock a user's password's vault depends on where the vault is actually stored. One thing that security experts always stress about is the importance of using two-factor authentication everywhere possible. The two-factor authentication is the idea of making it more difficult for attackers to gain access to your account. This is usually implemented by making the user submit another form of authentication in addition to their username and password. The second factor usually takes the form of a random string or characters that is generated by an app or a physical security token. 
Next, we'll talk about how two-factor authentication works specifically with LastPass. LastPass allows for two-factor authentication by allowing the user to set up a time-based, one-time password system such as Google Authenticator or a YubiKey. The second factor does not affect the creation of the hash that is sent to the LastPass servers. The application instead creates its own hash, uh, which is dependent on the method used for two-factor authentication, and is then sent to the server and verified. However, since the second factor is time-based and randomly generated each time it's used, it protects the user in case that an attacker was able to get their master password. So on the flip side, one password doesn't actually implement a two-factor authentication. As they put it, they have a they have a one and a half factor authentication. So we discussed a little bit earlier as to how it works, and basically to reiterate, you need a master password, your account key, and your encrypted data to decrypt your passwords. This clearly is more than one factor, but it's not really true two-factor authentication because it's not really based off of the model of something you have, something you know, and something you are. That typifies two-factor authentication. However, they claim that two-factor authentication is not really necessary. One password claims that two-factor authentication is designed to solve the password problem by mitigating password reuse, and this should never happen if you use your password generator for every account you have, and so they believe the problem is already solved and two-factor authentication is not really necessary. As you can see, there's a lot of very complicated math that goes into ensuring that attackers cannot compromise the keys that are used to encrypt the user's password. The math isn't as simple as what's shown on the whiteboard. Even if the attacker managed to steal the encrypted vault from the password manager servers, they would need at the very least the user's master password. Thus, your account passwords are safe in a password manager vault, and the only thing in question is the security of the master password. That's been our video. Thanks for watching.